Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking all about Windows 7. The operating system released by Microsoft in 2009 meant to succeed Windows Vista which was released three years earlier. While Windows Vista was widely criticized when it launched, Windows 7 on the other hand was met with a lot of praise. When it was eventually released, it quickly surpassed Vista in market share, and years later did the same to XP. And even though Microsoft killed off support for the operating system back in January, it still holds about 20% of Windows computer market share worldwide. In today's video, we're going to be exploring the development process that eventually led to the creation of Windows 7. I'll be taking you through four unique builds of the operating system compiled during different stages of the development process and discussing some of the major changes that occurred over the years. Let's get started. As I discussed in my Windows 7 end of support video, the initial idea for what would eventually become Windows 7 was actually devised 20 years ago, even before Windows XP was released. Microsoft came up with a roadmap detailing their plans for the next three releases of Windows. One of these releases was known as Blackcomb, which was scheduled to debut sometime after Longhorn, which became Vista, and Whistler, which became XP. It's important to note that the Blackcomb project didn't go exactly as planned, which I discuss in more detail in my end of support video. It wouldn't be until the summer of 2007 when it was revealed that Microsoft was working on a new release of Windows to succeed Vista. Its codename was Windows 7, which ultimately became the final public release name. Three months after that, on October 2nd, 2007, Microsoft developers compiled build 6469 of Windows 7. This is a pre-Milestone 1 build, and it is actually the second earliest development build of Windows 7 known to exist. For the most part, it resembles the previous release of Windows, as most early development builds do. However, in the initial setup process, we can see that the copyright date has been changed to 2007, and the build string at the bottom of the screen is identifying itself as Windows Codename Windows 7. Besides that, the setup process is identical to Vista. The logon screen even still displays the Windows Vista logo at the bottom, which can also be seen in Winfer. This particular build is based on the business SKU of Windows Vista. One major change we can see in Winver is the NT version, which has been changed to 6.1, which would be Windows 7's NT version. Everything about the desktop screams Vista, except for a couple of notable changes. Probably the most visible modification is the slight design change to the taskbar. And just like in the setup process, the build string is displayed on the desktop in the bottom right. There's also a new how to share feedback icon on the desktop. When opened, an application with an embedded web page appears, explaining how to share feedback and identify issues to be fixed in future builds. One of the other cool things we can do is enable a very early version of the super bar, the larger taskbar that would be introduced with Windows 7. This is done by adding a key to the Windows registry. Interestingly enough, all user account control prompts when opening Microsoft applications will now say WEX build account in place of Microsoft Windows. In the registry, we can go into HKEY current user, software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, explorer, and create a new key called taskband. Then add a new DWORD value named Ken has superbar and give it a value of 1. Once Explorer is restarted, the new taskbar will appear. While it's obviously not a feature complete in this build, the concept is here, and it does actually make a few changes aside from just making the taskbar larger. The center of the taskbar is a lighter gray color, and the buttons will now group if you have two windows from the same application open. One feature that has been removed is the classic start menu, which can no longer be enabled in this build. There's also a hidden boot screen accessible by enabling no GUI boot. This boot screen was not included with the final release of Windows 7, so it's kind of cool to see here. Two months later, Microsoft developers compiled build 6519 of Windows 7. This is a milestone one build and was the first to be released to Microsoft partners. 
Like the previous build I showcased, 6519 largely resembles Vista. However, one major change is with the boot screen. It now displays the setup background with a loading animation at the bottom. This boot screen would not be seen in the final release of Windows 7. The setup process is mostly identical to what we saw in the last build, however this one is a multi-SKU build, meaning that we can select from a list of Windows additions to install. The EULA also identifies the OS as Microsoft pre-release Windows 7 operating system, and the build string has been removed from the bottom right. Our first sign of change is on the login screen, where the image at the bottom now says Windows 7 as opposed to Windows Vista. This is also seen in Winver. The build string is still seen on the desktop, however this time the Windows codename text has been removed. There have also been some changes made to the gadgets, as the sidebar has now been entirely removed. This is exactly how Windows 7 behaved. There's also a new gadget asking the user to rate their experience. When clicked, a form will pop out which could be used to submit feedback to the developers. The feedback icon on the desktop has been changed as well, and it opens up the same window that we saw on the gadget. Although this time it's a dedicated window as opposed to a gadget pop out. Additionally, in the system tray, the overflow icons now have a pop-out interface similar to the final build of Windows 7. There's also an interesting feature in Auto Run. It has a timer. After 10 seconds, it will automatically perform the default action, which in this case is open folder to view files. This feature would not be present in the final release of Windows 7. Our next build to take a look at is build 6608, a Milestone 2 build compiled on May 11, 2008. The boot screen and setup process are identical to what we saw in the previous build, with one major exception. The logo has been changed and now identifies itself as Windows 7. Same with the version string at the bottom right. Another big inclusion is the Show Desktop button seen in the bottom right next to the system tray. This would also be a feature introduced in the final release of Windows 7. At first glance, this appears to be the only change made on the desktop. However, there are a couple of hidden features that can be enabled. These features are protected by Microsoft's Blue Pill lockdown system. Essentially, this system would protect certain features from getting discovered in the event of a leaked build. However, there have been some attempts to patch certain operating system files to enable access to these hidden features. Once we run the tool and restart our Windows session, you'll notice that the super bar is back with some additional changes. Now, the application icons in the taskbar will no longer display text. There is still grouping of icons, but a new arrow has been added to the right side of each icon as you hover over it that reveals additional options including pinning the program to the taskbar. There have also been some major changes to a couple of the default Windows programs. The calculator looks nothing like what we saw in Vista or Windows 7. It's totally new. There's also a unit conversion feature built right in. Microsoft Paint is the other program where we can see changes, but it still looks more like the Vista version of Paint than what we saw in Windows 7. However, if you look on the left side, you can see some new buttons. These are actually different types of pens that you can use to draw with. The buttons themselves are using placeholder icons though. As for the feedback program, while the icon has been removed from the desktop, we can still access the program in the start menu. The application itself is entirely different and now asks you to log in using a Windows Live ID. Additionally, there's a new icon in the system tray for the Windows Health Center, which appears to be an early version of Windows 7's Action Center. Windows 7 Build 6780 is a Milestone 3 build compiled on August 29, 2008, about 11 months before Windows 7 would officially launch. It's in this build where we can see many more visual changes. The setup wizard finally gets a new background, which is also used on the login screen. This is the same background that would be used on these screens in the public beta release of Windows 7. The desktop wallpaper, however, is still from Vista. The boot screen has also been changed in this build. It now says starting Windows, similar to in the final release, but with a different animation. 
The feedback icon is back on the desktop, and this time its functionality is stored in the control panel as opposed to a separate application. And just like in the previous build, 6780 updates the design of a few Windows applications. The calculator looks more like what we saw in the final release of Windows 7, and Paint and WordPad have been redesigned with the ribbon interface. The Windows Explorer also got a redesign with the addition of Libraries, a feature introduced with Windows 7. Once again, we can run the Blue Pill Patcher to get access to some of the hidden features. Interestingly enough, user account control prompts in this build do not fade the background out. It behaves like a standard window. Upon logging back in, you can see that the taskbar has been completely redesigned and looks closer to the final implementation. There are a few minor differences though. We still see the little arrow when hovering over icons, and the icons themselves appear to be slightly more spaced out in this build. So those are some of the major changes in build 6780, but before we move on with the rest of this video, I want to briefly tell you about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that let you take the next step in your creative endeavors. Whether you're looking to learn a new skill or brush up on something you already know, Skillshare has something for you with classes on web development, photography, and video editing, just to name a few. One class that I started taking when I first discovered Skillshare is this one by Mike Vardy on keeping good productivity habits. Because the classes are entirely online, in video form, you have full control over when to take the lessons. Most classes are under an hour in length, split up into multiple sections for more convenient viewing. And because Skillshare's focus is on learning, you'll enjoy the lessons free of advertisements and other interruptions. With Skillshare's premium plan, you'll get access to every class on the platform. And with an annual subscription, it costs under $10 a month. But today, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 people who click the link in this video's description a free two-month trial of Skillshare Premium. So if you're interested, join Skillshare today and start learning. On January 8, 2009, just over four months after Build 6780 was compiled, Microsoft released the first publicly available beta version of Windows 7. This release, known as Build 7000, was made available for download on Microsoft's website. It provided the general public with a first look at the next release of Windows, which would ultimately debut six months later in July of 2009. As such, this beta is very close to the final release. The only major difference at first glance is the desktop wallpaper, a beta fish, a little play on words that also signifies that this is a beta release of Windows. So there you have it everybody, that is a retrospective look at the development history of Windows 7 over the years. I hope you all enjoyed this video, if you did, definitely be sure to give it a like and get subscribed, and as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.